Hi guys and welcome. So I've had a couple of inquiries, comments about applying Tamiya's um, self-adhesive Zimrat coating to their kits, uh, especially Tiger Ones, etc. So I thought I'd share a couple of things in this video and um, hopefully you'll find it entertaining and maybe be able to take something away from it by the end. So Today we're going to have a look at this one. This is item number 12647. It is for the mid to late production Tiger Ones. So that's the part number that you get. You get in the bag, you get uh, full details of how and where to apply the Zimmerit coating. So that's really helpful. Um, you do apply the coating before you do anything else, before you put any other parts on the kit. You put the Zimrit coating on first, and then you put your holes through for various fittings, etc., etc. And of course, you do get a full sheet of Zimrit. So this is self-adhesive one sheet. You will need a straight-edge ruler. This is a steel one that I've had for a long time around. You can tell it's a little bit bent looking at the edge but it is still straight along there nice sharp blade on your cutting knife a pair of tweezers and something to hold water in so this is the top of a Pringles can very old love these because they're easy to clean so that's very handy but I'll fill you in on why you need that in a little while let's have a look at the sheet first so it's a full sheet as you can see, it covers the turret in two different styles. So you do have two different patterns. It's your choice as to which one you use, but it's purely on the turret. You do have this here. This is a spare sheet of Zimmerit, as is this large sheet here. And that's what we'll start working on first, because I recommend that you try it first see how it works and i recommend that you use the bottom of the tank so naturally enough you've got to make sure that it's clean all right dry the whole kit and convertible and that's what we'll be working on today you'll also notice this is tamia's late production tiger one hull and um see if I can get it to show you there you have it there's a line along the side and that will come in handy when you come to put the Zimrit on here but to start off we'll actually apply some of the spare Zimrit to the bottom because there's a couple of things I want to show you so on the sheet you'll see there are lines drawn here that's your cutting lines. Don't worry about the fact that it actually goes beyond. Just cut along the lines. The hardest part will be cutting those little circles out where the hatches go. That's the hard part. What you see here on the side panels is the zimmer actually goes below, below the line. If you are going to leave off uh, the side mud guards or even parts of side mud guards this is the part that you're also going to have to put in the Zimmerit was applied to the tank in production before the mud guards went on before anything else went on all right so let's get started and cut some of this out so, so as I said we're going to use some of the spares so bear with me while I cut this out. Right, so we've got the bottom of the hole. We've got three strips. So this does actually peel off quite well. I'll see if I can get my thumbnail under there. My tweezers. Peel that off. As you can see, you can actually see through 
that and that's really nice I do like that so applying it is quite quite simple it is quite sticky that's all you have to do is put put it down and it will stick the problem comes if you put it down the wrong place because once you put it down you'll need to lift it again with your blade and pull it back very carefully because this will actually if you pull it back wrong this will actually tear right so but once it's down it'll stick in place now the easiest way is use a little bit of water so if i just put in some ordinary water into there just like that grab a paintbrush in the water smear it over there there you go fairly simple fairly straightforward do the same thing peel it off if I can get my thumb under there peel it off and put it down on the water like so all right so it will peel off quite easily with the water underneath it so you can maneuver around quite well the only issue with that is you can't maneuver it once it's on there and um, literally all you've got to do with this water is just dry it with a piece of paper towel or um, anything cotton bud whatever and it's in place all right it will still lift a little bit easier until it dries completely but the water does help it it means that you can actually pick it up and move it much easier than possibly um, tearing this because if you try to pick this up wrong and it probably won't do it this time but you can like that tear the corner off and damage it so a little bit of water not much just wet the surface and the only other, the other thing you could try is with your water is a little bit of dishwashing liquid just a little tiny drop it doesn't need much a little drop like that All right and you might go yep okay what do i do add some water to that get your brush Right. Same thing. Paint it on the surface. All right. Get your decal. Peel it off on there. And what you'll see with this is you can actually maneuver it. All right. You can actually move it around a little bit so if it is in the wrong place all right you can adjust it accordingly and then you just get your bit of tape, paper towel and do exactly the same thing dry it off completely dry it off it's fixed all right and no it doesn't move i would recommend uh, once you've got the whole tank done leaving that to dry completely for probably a day it's not overnight something like that just to make sure it's all dry it's all good and that's literally how you apply it it's the easiest way Water with a little tiny drop of dishwashing liquid means that it will apply quite smoothly and you can still maneuver around without having to pull it off 
and it works quite well for small sections like that. The bigger sections, a little bit more difficult, but it still works. Okay, so that's not too bad. So that's just a quick hint as to one of the ways to apply this. Now, now for circles like this, move that out of the way. In fact, we'll move everything out of the way to make it easy. So a lot of people will just start cutting like this. No, that's not how you do it. The easiest way to cut a circle out is to start on one point very, very slowly and move the paper around while keeping the blade in the same place and you'll find it is much easier to cut a circle doing it that way now if you're a bit scared of you know mucking that up That's quite easy. All you need to do is grab yourself a piece of paper. If I grab a piece of paper, move this out the way. Okay, easy. So what you do is you grab yourself a couple of coins. This is a 20 cent piece Australian, of course, with a platypus on it. And this is, of course, a, oh, that's upside down, 10 cent piece with a lyre burn on it. We have really nice coins and notes. So, get yourself your coin, make a circle, right? Doesn't have to be a perfect circle, Just make a circle, same thing again. And this is how I learned how to cut circles. All right, get your knife. I might just make that a bit smaller. And same thing again. So, see if I can show it a little bit clear, clearer for you guys. Start at one point, All right? And instead of moving the knife around in a big circle, move the knife slowly by turning at the same time the paper all right and then you just follow the line you're only doing short bits at a time this is a bit skewy because the camera got in the way but It is quite simple to cut a circle. Yes, I know I made a mistake there. That's only because the camera got in the way of my head and I missed it. But yeah, so just practice that first. If you're not uh, a bit confident about cutting these out or these out, practice it on a bit of paper with a couple of coins. You'll end up with a reasonable hole right and the same principle applies to things like this the small holes it even applies to these odd little bits like this instead of going oh yeah i can cut that zap zap don't do that turn the whole sheet cut in a straight line same with this little piece here I'm not sure if i can show you but maybe i can it does have little tiny bits here cut this line here cut this line here turn the whole sheet around cut this line 
cut this angle. And that's all you've got to do to make sure you get nice straight lines is literally turn the sheet around. See if I got that. If you're not sure if you've cut it or not, look at the back. If you look at the back, you'll see how much you've actually cut through. So all I've got to do now is cut this line here. And that should come out. And if it's done, not going to, don't be scared to do it again. All right? There's my, not sure if you can see it, there's my little tiny piece of clear self adhesive that I've cut from there. And that's how you do it. So you don't have to cut the whole section out, you can do all of the circles first. I would probably do that first. Do the circles first while it's on the main sheet and then you, all you've got to worry about then is just following the outside lines. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. All right, so let's put this stuff aside. Right, so let's apply a panel of Zimbrit to the front of our tiger. So this is this panel here. You'll notice it has cutouts for the parts which go on the inside of these hubs here. And as with everything else, dry finning is a must just to make sure it fits within these sides everything works all right so that's fairly straightforward so what we'll do is we will grab our solution of water and dishwashing liquid give it a bit of a Overall wipe, All right? Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Grab our panel and our tweezers. Pull it off, All right? And pop it on. And because we've used water and dishwashing liquid we can actually peel it off move it around a lot easier than if we just stack it straight onto the surface as you can see i'm picking it up and moving it several times just to make sure it gets in the right place which it isn't as you can see it's a bit too low move it up there get it in the right place there you see, it's still crooked. But the good thing is, because I've used the soapy solution, I can actually just put it down. There. And there you have it. There's the front plate for the Zimrit. So, as with all decals, you need to press them to the side just to get any air bubbles out. So right. there you have it. That's a fairly simple, straightforward application. Something I need to show you about constructing a tiger at least. This is one of the side panels. And if you line it up at the back here, where it's supposed to be, you'll see that it actually extends over the front. So... This needs the upper hull front armor plate section completed, glued in place first. So there are steps that you need to do in constructing the Tiger, but overall, most of these panels can be actually attached to the tank before you begin assembly. It's just a case of looking at the assembly instructions and working out as you go. Take your time do a bit of test fitting, and just enjoy applying Zimrit to your Tiger, Sturm Tiger, Panzer IV, 
or wherever else. And yes, there are some complex sections. There are some small complex sections that will need a little bit more effort. But overall, it's not hard. Applying Tamiya Zimra is actually quite simple. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got a couple of things from it. And thank you for watching. Thank you for your likes, comments, and subscriptions. And as usual, guys, take it easy, stay safe, and I will see you later.